Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Hope everyone had a good lunch session. Uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle to X or vehicle to infrastructure. Um, the topic of this tutorial is actually uh, quite similar to the session we did last year at C uh, CBPR. Um, the main changes for this year's tutorial is we'll have a couple new papers on ways that people in the last year have been doing like fusion of the different messages between different vehicles and infrastructure. But a lot of it is a recap from last time, but I will try to go over through it. And this year is also a bit condensed, around 15 minutes. So I might go a little bit more quickly, but feel free to ask if you have any questions about it. So yeah, the title's a bit outdated because it's vehicle to vehicle communication, but uh, a lot of the topics that we talk about in this session are very relevant to vehicle to infrastructure, which is also another very uh, exciting area of work. And if you have like significant resources, you can uh, have infrastructure available to also do vehicle communication. So um, in the previous sessions of this tutorial, we talked about all the different components to an autonomous system. In particular, we talked about perception. So once again, we have here uh, ego vehicle or self-driving vehicle equipped with a set of sensors. And given that sensor data, you try to detect all the agents in the scene and where they're going to go into the future. Uh, but the challenge with this type of uh, setup, of course, this is already uh, the main task of self-driving is that we can actually try to be a bit safer and be uh, uh, more effective in our communication by actually having other self-driving vehicles in the scene. So. Uh, one way you can be even more robust, see even further, is to have vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication or vehicle-to-infrastructures set up. Uh, so in the past, before like the big boom of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication in computer vision, there was vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication for just uh, route routing and for also traffic flow and management. But now there's a idea of being able to communicate sensor data between the different components of the different vehicles. So. For example, far away objects that we might have very few observations for. If there's another self-driving vehicle there, or there's infrastructure that has camera or LiDAR sensors in that area, you can get more observations about the scene. You can run some processing on this and then send that sensor data or autonomy outputs to the main vehicle of interest. And then the self-driving vehicle can then use that additional information to plan a bit safer or um, to plan a bit further ahead. So it's gonna be more comfortable drive. So, there are several advantages to vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle communication and vehicle-to-infrastructure communication. So one is you can see more locations than you would otherwise. You can see through occlusions because if you're only capturing your sensor data from a single viewpoint, you might have some visibility artifacts in terms of the LiDAR sensor, for example, or a camera when there are different objects overlapping with each other. And um, you can also see better because you have more dense observations about the scene. And then the one other thing to know is that if you have vehicle to infrastructure or other vehicles, they are all also having additional compute available that can process that sensor data before sending it to the main vehicle that's driving. Cool. So in this field, there are a lot of still open questions, but a lot of papers in the last couple of years have been working to address these problems. So the questions are, what information should actually be transmitted? You have an option of actually sending the sensor data itself or maybe running autonomy on it, like perception or prediction, and then sending those outputs to the vehicles of interest. Uh, given that sensor data you receive or messages, how do you fuse those messages together in a way that you can then execute with a motion planning system? And then also the other question might be, how do you support different types of sensor data, such as images, LIDAR, radar, or if in the case where there's a lot of different self-driving vehicles out there in the world or infrastructure, they might operate with different types of mo perception models. How do you adapt the data you get from one type of perception model to another perception system and have like a way of combining all this information into a single useful representation for planning? The other component is that, uh, of course, there's 5G now <laughs> out there in the world and it, it helps improve the bandwidth significantly, but there's still huge amounts of data in terms of point clouds and images that are very high resolution. You still need some amount of compression potentially to be able to send these messages efficiently with low latency to be able to get the messages in time for the vehicle to respond to potentially some actor coming out of occlusion that it would have seen earlier. And then the other aspect is that uh, just like all technology, there's vulnerabilities to potentially hacking or ways that can be causing noise or errors in the communication. Uh, and how can we best transmit these messages in a secure fashion or be robust to errors or perturbations uh, to be able to 
be uh, having robust communication for vehicle to vehicle communication. So we'll now answer some of these questions and go over the past works. So first we'll talk about what information to transmit. Of course, you can transmit first of all the sensor data itself, images, point clouds, radars, but you also have the other option of being able to transmit the direct outputs of your autonomy systems perception and prediction stack. This can be detections, bounding boxes, trajectories, or also occupancy, if you think of like a more uh, volumetric representation for your autonomy outputs of perception and prediction. And you might also consider transmitting other intermediate representations. So first off is the input fusion approach. And this is like a pretty straightforward method when you have LiDAR data, because you can, if you know the pose of every vehicle or all your infrastructure, you can send the point cloud data along with the pose of where the sensor data is, and then transform it all into a shared coordinate frame. And then you can aggregate that sensor data and then give it directly to your uh, perception model. Now, this might be a bit more challenging in a image setting where you have multiple images. It's not clearer than the shared coordinate system unless you have some depth values associated with the image data to be able to warp it all into the shared coordinate frame. But in the case of like point cloud data or data with an explicit 3D representation, you're able to easily transform it into the shared coordinate frame. And then you can run your standard perception models. And the benefit of this approach is that you're sending all the data that you potentially can get from any of your vehicles or infrastructure in the network. Um, and it's also quite straightforward to combine in the case of LiDAR. But some of the disadvantages is that now you're basically putting all the sensor data into one single autonomy system and vehicle platform. It needs to do so much more additional computation to process all this additional data. And even in the case, if you have, say, sparse representations, you still have to process quite a bit of data about your surrounding scene. Um, Additionally, it's uh, pretty expensive to transmit. Like I talked about before, uh, self-driving vehicles are starting to have very complex multi-sensor setups, many cameras and many LIDARs. It's not feasible potentially to transmit all this data, even with very strong networks these days. And the other component is that if you just transmit the raw data, you're not able to maybe transmit information that could be done pre-processed ahead of time about how uncertain you are about certain locations of the scene. And it really depends on how much information you can send about the sensor data to the vehicle of interest to help it understand the uncertainty. For example, if I directly just send the point clouds of the self-driving vehicle from one vehicle to another, I don't actually encode my like uncertainty of where that point cloud was observed if I just send it into that shared corner frame directly. But maybe points that are far away from the sensor are actually more uncertain than points that are close by. And the other option is output fusion. This is the fusing of bounding boxes and trajectories. This is a very compact representation, but uh, the challenge is that now you don't propagate any of the additional context that was used in that processing by the perception model in the first place. So it's harder to propagate uncertainty. And you can also be wrong because of this like thresholding effect for detection with NMS. So it's important to be able to still provide some way of providing scene context to get a more clear representation of the scene. And then there's uh, methods like that do hybrid fusion. So these approaches will try to create a combination of both sensor fusion and output fusion. Sensor fusion for regions that are far away and less uncertain or less certain, as well as uh, output fusion for places that it's more confident in. And that's like a recent work from, I guess, a, a couple of years ago that does this approach. And then also there's work that tries to store uncertainty values associated with the output model. So for detection bounding boxes, for example, your perception model can output uncertainty values of how confident it is in the box. Then you can try to suppress uncertain confidences and increase the confidence of boxes that you're more confident in. And then that allows for a more solid detection for the actors that you have in the scene. And that allows you to take the message that you value, you value the most when you're in a network. All right. And then there's the work that's done them has had the most interest in the community uh, because there's a lot more learning and data-driven aspects to it which is intermediate fusion. This is where you can send intermediate outputs of your perception and prediction stack, such as uh, BV voxel features or point cloud features or whatnot, or even image features. You basically are able to distribute the computation across the different vehicles or infrastructure in your network, and then share more uh, compact messages about the most important information in a kind of data-driven manner. Um, so it's very compact and expressive. You can express the scene context and even preserve the viewpoint and you have distributed computation. But the downside is that uh, if each of the different nodes in your graph have different types of perception module, you need to perform some type of domain adaptation to transfer those features from 
one perception system or sensor modality to another sensor modality or perception system in a unified way so that you can finally do planning on the end of the, all the messages fused together. So now I'll go over some more details of the different types of intermediate fusion available. So there's quite a wide variety of works that try to use different types of uh, neural networks, such as graph neural networks or vision transformers, to aggregate features from the different sensors and vehicles in the scene. Um, I won't go into detail here, but there's a lot of variety of ways that people have tried to combine the intermediate representations for planning. And of course, there's not just how do you fuse the features together, but also now that you have multiple vehicles or infrastructure in the same scene, you might be able to leverage that additional data as a form of supervision to get better feature representation. So here's an example where there's a teacher that takes in all the high quality aggregated LIDAR data or camera data and then performs perception, but it's a bit slow. But then you can take the outputs of that model and use that as a kind of supervision to your student networks that are actually running in real time on board on your perception system. So you can still do fusion, but then you can now supervise your features in a with the higher quality data from the kind of combined messages with your teacher network. And another approach that does this is called like DAV reconstruction. So instead of it supervising on like the outputs through distillation, you actually can supervise through the reconstruction. So here, this prep that proposes to do scene reconstruction with multiple sensor data uh, from the different viewpoints. And then you can use that higher quality reconstruction to supervise the student network or the vehicle networks that are controlling each of the actors, uh, like the SDVs, to do better, higher quality perception. So that's on the feature learning side. I already talked about it a bit briefly before, but there's voxel features, point features, image-based features, and BEV features. And it's kind of a still like an open question of what type of features are best suited for fusion, because uh, you have to take into account what networks are processing the data, what sensor modalities are you using. Um, and it, there's like a bit of like domain adaptation work required to be able to get the features aligned all into a shared representation or domain for, simulate, uh, for evaluation. Cool. Um, we talked about how you can merge different features together. There's also the aspect of compression I talked about before, which is how do we send these messages in a, as compact manner as possible? So there's different types of compression listed here. You can do like point cloud compression, image compression. Oftentimes, these are compression based on only reconstruction metrics, but they don't take into account, say, compression based on the end task, which is autonomy performance. You might be able to discard a lot of data that doesn't matter to the actor of interest that you're sending the message to that could be like removed and then have a lower message bandwidth. There's also output representation, which is already very compact. And then you have learning-based compression techniques, such as a uh, ballet compression for feature-based uh, sending of messages. Um, now here are a couple of recent works that are different from the previous tutorial uh, that have come out recently on this kind of compression for sending messages for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. So one option is, Rather than having to send each message and compressing it independently, you can actually leverage the fact that you might be sending the messages at a, like sequentially at a time to the vehicles in the network. So you can take the difference between, say, two consecutive point clouds, compute the flow, and then compress the flow into like a sparse representation for sending messages. So this type of sequential compression rather than single image or single point cloud compression can be more effective in the long run. And on a similar line of work, there is work that tries to have a shared code book of features that are known across all the nodes in your network of vehicles and infrastructure. And then given the shared code book, you can send much more compact messages about what you're seeing in the scene than you would before when you just have to do full compression of the data each time. All right. And then I talked earlier before that you have different sensor modalities, camera data and LiDAR data. You might have 2D features versus 3D features. How do you fuse them together? There are networks now that are done in recent works that try to do feature like fusion between the modalities and uh, train the networks in such a way to think about the end perception task or prediction task and fuse in that manner. Cool. And then uh, similarly, there's another type of like approach here that tries to adapt to different spatial resolutions. Um, yeah, I think I talked about this one last year too, but move on. 
All right. So we talked about sending uh, messages in a compact manner and also to being able to share them in the feature space for more learnable based fusion. But of course, there can be errors and noise in your vehicle to X communication. So you need to be able to be robust to this and standard ways of being robust to noise or adversarial attacks is to incorporate that into your training. So here we can use uh, errors in the pose or the latency between the messages sent from one vehicle to the others and try to account for that noise to be more robust to the aggregation of those messages before you finally do the output perception and prediction. And then similarly, you can do adversarial perturbations. So this is where you optimize your noise that you apply to say feature maps in order to have poor perception and prediction performance. And you can then again train with the augmentation strategies to try to be more robust to this. And then also you can be adversarial in your placement. So you can find which locations are challenging in a vehicle to vehicle setting. All right. And then the last aspect of V2V communication I'll talk about is data sets. So uh, it's very challenging, as you can imagine, to be able to collect data sets when it's not yet the case and it's still kind of a bit in the future where we have multiple self-driving vehicles or infrastructure available to run with. So you have to actually collect this data yourself by having self-driving vehicles with sensors equipped with it or build infrastructure and then collect data where you have several nodes in the same region and then sending messages with each other. And then you create a data set like that. So oftentimes people re resort to simulation, uh, but there's also some recent real world data sets that are available for vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle to X. So yeah, uh, highlight here two data sets that there were there for realism and also uh, like this is synthetic data sets. Uh, this one is based on real data and building digital twins. That's a couple years old, but there are some recent data sets from say Carla that are able to get much more controllable simulations uh, and have uh, reasonably dense data available for images of the LiDAR from very different locations in the scene that you can use to have a pretty, pretty good development cycle with. And then now, yeah, it's cool that there's also now real recent real world data sets available for vehicle to vehicle communication and vehicle to infrastructure. Um, recent papers have been using V2V for real as a benchmark for evaluating their models. All right. Um, so to recap, uh, we talked about various different types of fusion strategies and compression for vehicle to infrastructure perception. And similarly, we talked about uh, the different types of data sets available in both SIM and real for fusing and evaluating your models on this type of message based communication data. And yeah, it, I think some of the promising directions mentioned here have sort of been tackled initially by some of the recent works, such as different types of models, autonomy based models, or also different types of sensor modalities, and further reducing memory and time bandwidth. And it's just a matter now of trying to take these strategies and actually scale them and put them on a real world system. Because it's yet to really be demonstrated that you can get vehicle to vehicle communication running in the real world in a production setting. So a lot of work that's been done so far is exploratory. It's really now about can we get V2V communication to work in practice uh, in these settings, since we would say urban infrastructure or even on highway settings. So yeah, I think that's the main uh, discussion for this session of the tutorial. Happy to take any questions. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. So the question was, are there any efforts to standardize the messages that you communicate between different autonomy models so that there's a standard format to make it easier to communicate between different representations and then you don't need to have to worry so much about domain annotation. Um, to my knowledge, there might actually be a couple of recent works that try to propose this, so, but I'm not aware of um, any that's like being officially adopted by say self-driving companies. Uh, but maybe in the future when there are a lot more vehicles out there, it will be more of a push to then standardize that format. Um, yeah. Great question though. Thanks. Any others? All right. Thank you.